Hey, hey, everybody. Question. Not question for you. Question to me that I'm answering and going from there. If I am baptized and I'm gay, can I be absolved? So how I'm hearing this question is, if I'm baptized, let's say I'm four days old, mom and dad bring me to the waters of holy baptism, I'm baptized, and I go forward from there. But then as I, as I go through life, I start having these, 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 these feelings, these desires. And I've gone to Sunday school, I've heard about this lifestyle, you know, that my pastor has preached from the pulpit, talked in, in the Sunday school that homosexuality is a sin and that, you know, those who abide in it are abiding in sin like any other sin. It's like if you're abiding, well, take even a heterosexual. If you're abiding in lust, having desires and acting on them outside of marriage is sinful in the same way that acting on homosexual um, desires is sinful. So in God's eyes, there's not one sin that's worse than the other. So the question is, can I be absolved of that? Can I be absolved of the desires? Can I be absolved of the acts? If I follow through on the desire, am I forgiven? And the answer is absolutely yes. There isn't one sin that Jesus did not die for on the cross for you. It, there's not a but after that. But if you're gay, sorry, you're out. Everything else is okay. You can be as angry as you want to be. You can be as vengeful as you want to be. You can be as drunk as you want to be, high as you want to be. But, you know, if you're gay, then I'm sorry. If you listen to too much Elton John, you're toast. No, Elton John's awesome. I'm, I'm digressing here. I do that sometimes. But the reality is, when you come to your pastor to be absolved, it's you confessing that I, I have guilt for what I've done. I, I, I want, it says it in the service of private confession and absolution, I want to do better. I don't want to live this way. I don't want to have these desires. I don't want to succumb to the temptation. Please forgive me. And the answer is absolutely yes. You are forgiven. It is Christ to bear now. And he grants you strength and endurance in your Christian walk, your pilgrimage unto heaven as you struggle with these things. And this is the same for any sin that you deal with. The problem, why we have a problem talking about it, is it's become a taboo sin to the church. It's like, okay, here's things that are okay to be. You know it's okay to get divorced. You know in the Missouri Synod about 100 years ago, if you had life insurance, you were going to hell? Now we have a, a, a company that sells insurance. So the church is always kind of, you know, flip-floppy with it, crisscross and all that type of stuff. The reality is, the word of God is what endures forever. And the word of God says every sin in Christ is forgiven, that you may bear it no more. So I pray that this is helpful to you. And it's hard to answer in just three minutes, but I encourage you to meditate on it. Why do you have these desires? Why have you succumbed to them? And it's the same with anything. But rest assured that no matter what it is, including being gay, in Christ it is taken care of, meaning in Christ he bears that struggle with you. And it's going to be something you struggle with your whole life long. It's not something that's going to go away, but it's going to always be there. But thanks be to God, Christ is always there for you. God bless you all. We'll see you next time. Did we do good? Is that, is that okay? If, if you liked that, hit the button that says that you like that. Maybe even subscribe to see more of these. Even give. Help us fund this mission of making known the gifts of Christ Jesus to youth and young adults. If you like this video, check out our website, higherthings.org, and check out more content from Higher Things.